So you've been watching way too many VTubers and you too would like to become a virtual YouTuber. Hi, I'm Brian and today I will be showing you how to become a VTuber for free. We'll go through the programs and planning needed to get you up off the ground. Now to complete the process, you will need some other things like a mid-end computer and a microphone. But if you already have those things, you're good to go. Now the process shown will help you create a mock-up 3D model. This is an important distinction from Hololife's 2D, live 2D models, and they do have a very different look as opposed to a 3D model. However, live 2D, the program used to create their models, is a fair bit more complicated and does require skills in both design and art. The program we're gonna be using, Vroid, is much easier to approach. The barrier to entry on Vroid is a lot less steep. Let's go ahead and get to the 3D modeling portion. I've already made my personal model, so I'm gonna be making a new one here, Kuro. So once you load up Vroid, you'll have some sample avatars to get started. You can pick one of these characters or start with a blank male slash female template. I started with the default male template. Having three or four reference characters on a side screen that you like is useful for reference here. The first section I started with was hair. You have your base hair, which is what you can see here. Unless you're more experienced, I would leave the base hair as is design-wise. Now, you can add hair in two main ways. The first is that you can use the procedural group, which generates groups of hair strands. These strands can be manipulated with anchor points. Anchor points are, they make things a little more complicated, so I would not suggest this method unless you know what you're doing with anchor points. The second method I used was the freehand tool. This is the one that I would go with. It's a lot easier, trust me. This method, you literally paint the hair strands on individually. You have many options to change the texture, the color, the size, and the shape of the strands. Now, actually knowing how hair works and how hair is layered is very helpful here, as each strand you paint on is on a different layer. For Kuro, I'm going for a little bit of a different look, though, kind of the anime boy look, a sort of wavy with bang style. I also use the default brush because I actually think it's pretty good when you turn down the lighting settings, but you may want to use a different brush or you may even want to make one of your own. Once you have the hair looking more or less how you want, the next thing to focus on is the body. The overall settings were pretty close to what I wanted, but I adjusted the shortness a bit. The torso, neck, arm, legs, etc. can all be adjusted here. The other areas to adjust are facial aspects like eyebrows, eye, nose, mouth, and just like the hair, all of these can also be changed with the texture and the look of them. Back to that after clothes though. By default, you have the school uniform, the lab coat, and derivatives of those. Starting with the base t-shirt and pants, you can alter clothes to pretty much fit your design. So yes, there are not a lot of preloaded assets here as far as clothes go, but you can modify them pretty easily to get what I would say is like the, the basic wardrobe. You can also go into the texture tab to change the look of the actual material. Because right now it looks like a normal basic cotton cloth, I would say. As described earlier, you can change clothes design by painting, deleting, importing, and exporting different layers. Layered over the top is the guide that shows you how the clothing will actually lay on the character. So if you do choose to export or import layers into Photoshop, you'll be able to bring that guide in and then you can color right over top or right underneath that. Coloring can be done with a base color and then the rest of the coloring can be brushed right onto that. Now, for instance, if you wanted to make a makeshift tank top, you could delete the sleeves off of a t-shirt on both sides though. And I would make sure that the mirror tool is turned up on the top here so that you have even sides on both sides. Now to complete the look, I added a poorly drawn sloth friend on the front of the shirt. If you want to do drawn on art like this, I think it's the best way to add it under a new layer. Now this is avant-garde art. What can I say? The eyes of your model can convey a lot of emotion. For a mock-up model, it's fine to leave them as is, but I grabbed some pre-made ones from Booth. Link in the description. Now once you have your eyes looking how you want them, you can move on to some of the more finite details like the eyebrows, the nose, the face, and the mouth. The default skin tone on the face didn't look great to me, so I deleted it all and used a flat color that's kind of like a, a peach. 
And for the mouth, I basically drew it as like a flat line. There was something throwing me off about the lines of the default mouth. Something didn't quite look right to me. And now you're ready for export. For exporting, go to the camera exporter tab. The main thing to change here is gonna be material reduction. This change makes the camera software a little easier to work with because it's not such a big file. You can change the material reduction down to two, click export, and then it will export your model as a .vrm file. In the camera section while you're here, by the way, you can also mess around with different animations and poses for your model if you wanna export a picture to show off or if you wanna use it in a thumbnail. Now your model is all good and ready to go. We're gonna need facial cam software to capture your face and put your expressions onto the model though. For this, we'll be using VC Face. I'll leave the link down below. Basically, you're gonna to go to VC Face and download the program itself. And once you've got it downloaded and installed, you're gonna see instructions on how to set it up in OBS. Make sure that you follow those. Basically, you set it up as a game capture full screen and you choose VC Face, allow transparency and turn your cursor off. Should be good to go for recording after that. Now, when you actually open it up proper and you actually get in, you're gonna choose your camera and you're gonna choose your microphone. You'll get a couple other settings after you do that. I would just leave them by default. The important thing to note though is your camera will be the camera that you're currently using to record your face with. So if you're using a webcam, make sure that you actually choose the webcam here. I'm running a DSLR to a cam link into a computer, which is why I'm choosing cam link here. You can leave it on high quality and 30 FPS. My microphone is actually running through an AG03, which is just my sound mixer, but you'll choose your sound mixer here or your direct microphone if you're using a USB mic, and then you'll choose your actual model. So yours are not gonna be preloaded by default. You're just gonna click add avatar, and then wherever your VRM model is, just double click that and open, and then it'll drag and drop into here. I've already got Squig, a model that I've created that looks nothing like myself, doesn't look like me at all. No, sir, not me. And I've already got Kuro preloaded here as well. We're not gonna use Kuro though. We're gonna use Squig because he's got similar proportions to me. But something to note is that you'll want to have VC face running first before you have OBS opened up and ready for capture. So make sure that you basically click start here and you're ready to go. Then you pull up OBS and you adjust all of your camera settings there. Wow, VC face is actually started and loaded now. And yep, that's me this would be the model that you created and it's pretty much out of the box working. How crazy is that? Now, there are a few things to adjust, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the model here so that you can see about how close the mouth tracking is because it's really good. So you're gonna use Alt and the scroll wheel to zoom in a little bit. Mouse three plus Alt lets you readjust your positioning in the actual frame. And wow, you can see how well it is tracking my mouth. Something else cool that you can do before we deep dive into the settings too much. You can go to general settings. And at the very bottom, you can click show tracking points. This will actually show like the points it's using to track your face, which is super cool. So it can tell you like positionally where you are. So it tracks your mouth. It tracks your nose a little bit, but that's more for like facial positioning. And then it tracks your eyes for blinking. And then also tracks your eyebrows. How cool is that? Now you don't need to actually see my dumb face in real life, so we're not gonna worry about that anymore. And now we can talk about VC face proper with my actual models. By default, I would leave most of the settings unless there is something you don't particularly like. So for instance, if you, like, I'm looking a little stiff right now, so I can turn the smoothing up and I'm not quite as stiff now. Now something to note by default, I am very flowy by default. So if that, is if you don't really like that, you can turn the smoothing up and down to adjust to your liking, but this is pretty close to what I would use. Now, the other thing is positioning. If your character starts to get weird from like moving around too much, you can always click reset position and you'll be correctly where you are. Now, I am not looking directly at my camera right now. I'm actually looking at my screen. If you wanted to be looking directly at the camera, you can go to settings here and you can go to synthetic gaze and choose it to look at the camera. I have not had good luck with that setting, so I'm not gonna turn it on right now, but if you wanted it to be looking directly at the camera when you're not, you can turn on that setting. The other thing I would adjust under general settings, if you scroll to the bottom, is keep hips mostly fixed. So what you're seeing right now, if I scroll out from my model, this is what my full model looks like, by the way, he just T-poses by default, but 
if your model is, if your model's like a little too flowy, like you're moving from the hips a little too much, you can go to settings and you can click keep hips mostly fixed. When you're actually streaming, you would probably look something like this and you'd be a little more zoomed in and now that the hips are fixed, you don't look like you're about to actually float away. Now, if you had all the settings that you did like and you wanted to go ahead and test them out, you can click that little button at the bottom there and then press space bar to actually hide it. <laughs> and then you are in 3D space. Wow, amazing, space. Now, one thing you'll notice is that on the main screen anyways, when you are moving towards a corner, you will see these blue bars pop up. That is basically just to let you know that you're at the end of like the tracking range, basically the end of the range where your camera and VC face will be tracking you. So things get really weird towards those corners. So try not to move towards those corners too much, but if you do, it'll let you know. Now, if you really wanted to fine tune your model under the general settings, there are a million, million bazillion different sliders that you can change here. I would leave them mostly as is unless there's something that just really doesn't look right to you or there's a very specific look that you're going for. One of the only things I would majorly change is the lip sync audio overdrive gain. Basically, this is if, you're, if your microphone's coming in a little bit quiet or like you don't have or you're not using like a sound input board, then you can definitely turn up the makeup gain if you're seeing that your lip syncing is not working great. Mine's working pretty well, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And the other thing to change is the global reset position hotkey. Uh, by default, it's not set to anything. You can just click on that little thing and it'll let you set your position. Reset, okay. So let's say you're getting a little too like close to the edges or something and like your, as you can see, your model starts doing weird things. You can just press Z and it'll reset your position. Now, the other thing to note that I won't get hugely into, but expression settings. This is very important because there's only so much expression that you can tell from like my normal face, right? So by default, Vroid has some of these expressions kind of baked in and that's how they get into VC face. Basically, they're, they're already dialed in. This is just where you can toggle them to turn them on. So we have, obviously we have the neutral face, right? We have the fun face. We have the angry face, which I've turned mouth animation off for because it is a nightmare. Very angry. Can't talk while I'm doing this because I don't have mouth animation on. And then you've got joy and sorrow and surprise, but we're not gonna worry about those. The important thing here is to set your hotkeys. So let's say you wanted to use shift Q. Anytime that you change to a different expression with a hotkey, you can go back to neutral and everything looks good again. Now for expressing emotion, like if you're doing this for a video for a stream, if you wanted to express a particular emotion, this is how you would do it. There are automatic ways of doing it in VC face, but under expression detection, you can turn on either simple or the experimental expression detection. Basically simple is that if you make like a fun face, it'll try to make a fun expression. And under the experimental expression detection, which does have a tutorial with it, you can click on one of these to record the emotion. And then when you actually like, when the software tracks that you're making the same anchor points, it will change that expression. Really cool. However, somewhere between like 30 to 40% of the time, it just does not work for me. So I prefer to do it manual. And I would suggest when you're starting out anyways, to be doing it manually, because if you're using a software version to change your expressions and it chooses to change an expression when you don't choose to, it's gotta be a really weird time. Now, one other thing to change is if you want a background. So first, we're gonna go ahead and change ourselves to the alpha channel by clicking that little box in the bottom right, press the space bar to hide that weird little button. And then in OBS, you're going to add a picture like a, a JPEG or a PNG to the background. All that means is that underneath your camera source, you're just gonna add in your picture. So I already have one preloaded here. Let's say that Squig is going to the gym. Ba -bam. And Squig is in the gym. You can preload like whatever background that you want because you're more or less green screened with your model into whatever environment that you want. This just happens to be the gym. And it's one that I picked with a little bit of depth so that it looks more normal, if that makes sense. But this is how you would add like a different, like if you're going to like a different room or something, or you're going to pick something up, or you just want your character with a cool background, the way to do it is to add it into OBS as a picture underneath the game source. Now with your model and working in VC face, recording with OBS, you're pretty much good to go. 
For recording games and footage, you can just put that right underneath everything else and your model's good to go. However, I would adjust your model a little bit more to the bottom right or bottom left, depending on how you like their position, I guess. I would probably show up like this and then I would have the game up what, over here. <laughs> I'd have the game up over here and I would be playing a bunch of stuff and talking and it'd be a good time and I can make a bunch of different expressions like, ah, oh, I could be very shocked, whoa. And that's how you use Vroid and VC Face to make yourself a virtual YouTuber. Now with your Vroid and your VC Face model, you're pretty much ready to go with VTubing. There are many, many other things though that go into recording as far as a VTuber goes. And there are a million bazillion tutorials out there for how to actually record your gameplay, how to edit it, all that business, and how to stream of course. But with these two basics, you're good on the VTuber end, as far as the model goes anyways. Now, of course, you can commission someone to make you a Vroid model, or you can commission someone to make a live 2D model if you want a very, very high quality model with very high quality animations and rigging. This, however, is just the free way of doing it. It's a good way to test out a model and see if you're interested in the idea of being a VTuber. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and hey, if you found the video useful, make sure to comment down below and give this video a like. Until next time, this is your host, Trying Brian, signing off. One of us, one of us, one of us, one of us.